psychic self-defense. Today is the 30th of December, 1985. It's around 1.30 in the afternoon. Today I'm here in Massachusetts talking about enlightenment, the enlightenment of your being. Enlightenment is really divided into two parts, the search for knowledge, illumination and power. One part, of course, are methods and ways of stopping thought, making the mind quiet and learning to be introspective, gaining access to deeper stratas of being, of mind, of the universe. These methods are taught, can be learned from teachers fairly freely. It's helpful to be around people sometimes who practice those things that can be inspiring, or to have a teacher. But in a way, at least an equal, if not a more important part of the study, is psychic self-defense. Now, what's psychic self-defense? Well, very simply, it is maintaining the integrity of your own awareness. Life is a happy thing. Unless someone interferes with you. Or, of course, unless you interfere with the happiness of others. It is natural to be happy, to be strong, to be at peace. Certainly there are other conditions, other awarenesses. But the most important realization for you to come to, in my opinion, is that life is a state of mind. Everything is colored completely by your perceptual field. If you're happy, you could be in hell and it wouldn't matter. If you're miserable, you could be in heaven and it would be hard. Your perceptual field actually is what creates heaven or hell. As someone once said, nothing is either good nor bad, only thinking makes it so. Well, that's right. Not simply thinking, as we understand thinking, but also awareness. Thinking is a simple way of saying what we're aware of, our awareness field. We're made up of life energy, boy we are. And that life energy is electric, it's filled with power and beauty. And whenever our awareness field touches anything, we perceive it. Our awareness field shimmers and shines and moves, it's made up of the kundalini energy. Plasma energy. And other forces. Our life energy is radically altered when it touches other energies. Some energies affect it more than others. The energy of other human beings affects it. Then there are lots of non-physical beings. The energy of plants, trees, rocks, places. All of these things affect our energy field. Our energy field naturally determines our awareness. It is our awareness. And if your energy field is high, strong, you perceive yourself wherever you go. That's what you're seeing all the time, are endless reflections of yourself. That's all there is. Psychic self-defense, of course, is the opposite of psychic manipulation. In psychic manipulation, what someone is doing is seeking to gain your life energy. 
pure and simple, <laughs> or impure and simple, depending upon your point of view. It is possible to tap into someone's life energy, just like you can lift out money from their wallet if they're not aware of it. Just like uh, in the old stories, the vampire can drain blood from the victim and weaken them, and the vampire could finish them off and just take it all at one time, or they could keep coming back day after day. Just like you can have someone who always gets money from you who causes you to feel sorry for them, or when they could go out and make money themselves. And they make you sympathetic when you shouldn't be. And they feed off of you. There are two mentalities in our world, and lots of spots in between. One mentality I have referred to, of course, is the coyote mentality. The coyote mentality is simply the mentality of the predator. And then there is another mentality that we don't see too much of in this particular world on this planet Earth. And that is the mentality of the magical being that doesn't seek to feed off of anyone else, per se. That doesn't seek to enslave anyone else. These are happier, freer beings. And some of them wander on the earth, and of course in other worlds there are more. There's no right or wrong in this, I suppose. It's just a point of view. But even the coyote is a little concerned about the pack of coyotes feeding on it. Because that happens here. The universe is wonderful. The secrets of life are fantastic if you get to them. And if you want to, you should be able to. It's not intrinsically hard to have a strong and powerful mind. Granted, we live in a world of constant change. Success is followed by failure, failure by success. Life by death, death by rebirth. But still, you can dance along with all those pairs of opposites and have a wonderful time. It's not necessarily so hard when you know how, like anything, unless someone or something is interfering with you. In my opinion, everyone is interfered with to an extent by others. People want your life force more than you realize. Now, of course, at this point, one could become extremely paranoid and start to blame everything that you don't succeed at in your life or every problem that you have on others who are taking your life force which is just a wonderful way of excusing yourself and not doing those things. So here you have to be very careful to perceive properly when you are being manipulated and when you're just trying to blame others. And if you search your heart, you'll really know. That's about all I can say on that subject. Why do people want your life force and how do they get it? That's, we need to understand how the predator works before we can prevent them. We need to know their strategies. You need to see the designs of others. Well, naturally, if you're just very, very psychic, if you develop your seeing very well, you can just see it. You can see someone who's smiling at you and pretending to help you who's taking the luminous lines from their subtle physical body and pushing them into your subtle physical body and draining your energy while they smile. The chief device of a manipulator, meaning someone who doesn't want you to know what they're doing because their purposes are contrary to your own, the chief device that a manipulator uses is to keep your energy level low. Because if your energy level is high, you'll be able to just naturally see, just as your body recoils in pain, if you were to touch a flame for a moment. And it does that because it's part of its natural defense system. 
to let the intelligent being in there know that it has to, if it wants to preserve the body, keep it out of the flame. So you have a natural psychic self-defense network within you that reacts completely sensitively to psychic manipulation and people draining your energy. And if you would listen to it, you would always know exactly what to do. There's no need to be afraid. You'll just sense immediately danger, withdraw yourself from the situation. But we live in a world where we've been taught to not pay attention to our feelings and instead to always use reason and logic. I love reason and logic. I write computer programs. Love reason and logic. But that doesn't mean that I think reason and logic are the only modes of perception for dealing with life in the world when I have more. That's like saying I love my little uh, Chevrolet, but I have five other cars and I'll never use them. I won't drive the Mercedes, I won't drive the Ferrari, I won't drive the Jeep, that sort of thing. How silly. We have many modes and levels of perception. They are us. We should use them. They protect us. They give us a good life. But we've been taught not to believe and trust our most basic feelings. So what a psychic manipulator does is they seek to keep your energy level low. If they can lower your attention level, you won't see what they're doing. And obviously, if you don't see what they're doing, they can keep doing it, which is feeding off your energy. Psychic manipulators work in a couple of ways. They want your life energy, or sometimes just for the hell of it, they're not that interested in your energy. They just want to screw you over. They derive a malicious joy just from injuring, just from seeing people not succeed, or because they haven't succeeded at something themselves, they don't want anybody else to. It's a threat to them. It's like uh, in the Middle Ages when the church would burn so-called heretics who were scientists because they didn't want to hear about the fact that the earth wasn't the center of the universe and so on. They didn't want to have knowledge because if people had that knowledge, they'd look at the theories of the church and say, you guys are nuts. You're not going to run the world anymore. Your theories are not in touch with what is real. So the answer on our earth, when you come into something knowledgeable that is it all a threat, is destroy, kill, suppress. Shoot a Gandhi if you don't like what he says. Shoot a Kennedy if you don't like what he says. Shoot a Lincoln if you don't like what he says. If it's a threat to your little private economic establishment, your belief system, destroy, kill, mutilate, welcome to the earth, environment hostile. Now, I really don't want to get into a philosophical consideration with you as to whether this is a good or bad planet. I don't think it's either. I think it depends on your perceptual state. But to try and pretend that fear and domination, control and manipulation are not the operative modes in this world among the people who populate the planet is nuts. Talk to the people who have been in concentration camps. Talk to anyone who's been in a war, a prison, a family, a business. Needless to say, this is not the only place in the universe. There are places where <laughs> actually it's a little bit worse, and it's a lot better too. But it can be better in your own state of mind. But to not see these things and pretend they're not there opens you up for total manipulation. Just because you think you're trying to be positive, forget it. Be neither positive nor negative, just see. And if you can prevent yourself from being manipulated, you'll have enough energy to see wonder in all things. But I've seen too many individuals in the so-called spiritual fields who say, oh, that's a negative way to think. Oh, you'll just draw negative energy to yourself. And I watch them gradually weaken and fall apart. Unless they just have a tremendous amount of personal power. You need to know what the bad guys are up to, in other words. So anyway, manipulators come into your life. They want your life energy, or they just don't want you to succeed for the hell of it, or whatever it is. And they operate in fairly simple ways. It's not all that sophisticated, but it's quick. The psychic manipulation game is the fastest game on the planet, next to the enlightenment game. Which is a little faster. 
And what a person will do is get you to think about them. This is the first and most important step. When you think about someone or focus on them, or you think about a place, or another world, or a god, or a being, or whatever it is, your life energy touches what you think of and focus on, psychically. So what a manipulator wants you to do is they want you to think of them. And any way they can get you to think of them, any way they can get contact with you, that they can get into your life or get some control over your life or cause you to think that you need them, that they are important, will enable you to lose energy from their point of view. In other words, they got to have you thinking about them, feeling you need them, you love them, you want them, that they're necessary, that you're afraid of them. Same thing, attraction or aversion. Any type or expression of control. Needless to say, there are magical beings, enlightened beings, beings of power, who seek to do the opposite who would be happy to show you how to free yourself, who want nothing from you, who don't need to take life energy from anyone else, because they've learned simply how to create it by stepping into other levels of attention in other worlds. And they would teach you to be free. There's both in the universe. But you don't have to worry about them. We don't really have to talk a lot about them. If you meet one, if that's your good fortune, then trust them after making sure that they're that. But we do need to pay attention to the coyote net out there. So the manipulator seeks to get your attention. Now, some of the most obvious forms of manipulation, domination and control are sexual manipulation, Manipulation through fear, manipulation through love. Sexual manipulation is easy to understand. You're not particularly interested in having sex with someone, you know, a particular individual. They pass you on the street and they project a sexual field of energy towards you, which everyone can. That hits your plasma body, your subtle body. You feel it. It creates a level of excitement if you let it. You look at the person, you desire them, they've got you. Now they're in your mind. And even if you only pass them in an airport, in the office for a few seconds, and you never see them again, if you dwell on them, they now have what we call an energy line into your being, your attention field. You've created a link between yourself and that person. And they can walk back across that link psychically later, when you're not physically together, and draw energy from you. The tease is a popular method of sexual manipulation. Someone doesn't want to have sex with you, but they want you to desire them like mad. Actually, if you have sex with them, that will end the desire for a little bit, or you might get so close that you don't want to have anything to do with them. It's a control game. So all they do is project a lot of sexual energy, and you feel it, and they're saying, in effect, come on, let's jump into bed and have a good time. You feel that, but then when you come up to them, look at them, they pretend just the opposite, that they have no interest or there's something wrong with you for even thinking that. Therefore, you get very frustrated because your body is feeling what they're really saying. Let's go for it. But they're telling your mind, what's wrong with you? That isn't my intention at all. So as you get frustrated, you focus on them even more, and of course they drain your energy even more effectively. It's a control game. In terms of sex, the most difficult time, of course, aside from these that I've mentioned, is when you have physical sex with someone. It's a snap to drain energy and life force from them. During sexual intercourse, there is usually a moment when a person will kind of abandon themselves unless they have great control to the ecstasy of the physical experience. And as soon as they let go, they drop their defense shields, you can snap their energy. You can drain them. Once you create a line, particularly through sex, it's very easy 
to drain someone's energy. Now, needless to say, it's also easy to raise their energy. That's the tantric sexual concept, is because such a strong line is created during sexuality and after that you can also raise someone's attention that way if you're powerful enough. Because having sex with someone breaks through so many barriers. But it can be used either way. It depends on one's state of mind. Naturally, one can have sex and not be manipulative. Of course. One can go through life and not be manipulative. We're all manipulative. I mean, we all want things and we use our power to get them. But when I'm saying manipulative, again, it's a point of view, I'm saying manipulative in the sense that you're trying to injure or hurt another or limit them. One who tells you about the truth is manipulative, too, in the sense that they're trying to bring your awareness towards truth, and you may not be interested in truth. So they use a variety of manipulations to help awaken you to draw you to the study of truth. You're, you're glad later because you have more power and they teach you to be free. We all use manipulation. We've had thousands of incarnations where we've learned very subtle methods of mind control. There are very few new souls on this planet. Remember that when you deal with them. You're not dealing with who appears to be there and the better the deceiver, the more they can mask their talents and abilities. We all have some occult talents. The dream plane, a very sensitive time, is when you're asleep. When your conscious mind is, is there, you'll know if someone's trying to break into your house. When you're asleep, they can sneak in. So it's very important to be aware of that. If you wake up feeling really drained instead of refreshed, it means that you got hit during your sleep. So it's good to meditate a few minutes before you go to sleep, bring a lot of energy into your being, read a book that inspires you, whatever. And then when you wake up in the morning, if you feel very drained, just meditate for a while, recharge yourself, and review in your mind who you just feel did it. Again, your body knows. There's something inside you that knows. You just have to trust your feelings. Then if you break connection with that person, if you figure out whatever method of manipulation they have to get inside you, what level of control they've gotten of your life or your emotions or your time, if you eliminate that, they can't really bother you. People can only manipulate you and come into your dreams and things if you create an opening. If you want them, fear them, think you need them, trust them, they have to create an opening in your attention field. Somebody could live three houses down from you and you don't know them. They really will have a heck of a time infiltrating your attention field. It's the people you know who manipulate you. And the more you trust a person, the greater the possibility of manipulation. That doesn't mean everyone you trust manipulates you. But those are the most likely candidates. Christ had twelve disciples. He trusted them. One betrayed him, and he died. In other words, you can have eleven good apples and one rotten apple. Don't worry about the good apples. They won't hurt you. But the one rotten apple, if you miss them, can cost you your life, energy. Manipulation occurs through fear. If someone can get you to fear them, they get another line in. That's why it's important to be absolutely fearless, to realize that you are an eternal being. Fire cannot burn you, water cannot drown you, you're birthless and deathless. When you see that, when you meditate deeply and see that, you become fearless. But people will inject fears in you specifically, psychically, that push them into you that are antithetical to your nature. They're not how you feel. Psychic mani manipulation is very, very complex. It involves taking thoughts 
and ideas that the manipulator has or wants you to have, and they can psychically push them into your mind. The majority of thoughts that you think are not your own. They're either thoughts that you're psychically feeling from people around you that are coming through you, or they're the conditioning that you received growing up as a child, the way that you were taught to think and feel about life in the world, the description of the world that you have. Parents particularly create a description of the world in which you'll always need them, want them, where you fear them, love them. So it's necessary to find new ways of seeing, new descriptions of the world that do not open you up to manipulation, where you can view things just as they are and maintain the wholeness and integrity of your attention field. People have the ability to make you sick. They can enter your attention field, they can project energies. Just like a magical being can project a field of light into your attention field and raise your awareness and lend you personal power for a while, give you a boost. So it is possible for beings on the other side of the force, the dark side of the force, the Darth Vader's of the universe, as opposed to the Yodas and the Obi-Wans, to project negative fields of attention. If this is happening, you'll begin to notice the signs. The first place you see these things happening, where you're picking up negative psychic energy, is in your skin and your hair. Your skin and hair will become very dry, your hair may start to fall out. We're not talking about male pattern baldness here. Diffuse hair loss, change in texture. These are signs that you're being hit by abrasive psychic energies. Your skin becomes real dry. Then, of course, more serious diseases will develop. I always think, of course, when you see any manifestations or signs that something's happening with your body, even if you know for sure it's psychic manipulation and occult energy, and that the doctor can't do anything, I think it's good to see the doctor anyway. Just to check and get the doctor's opinion and see if they say it's something else. And then, of course, when they say, well, gosh, you know, you're just getting old, or we don't know what it is, or there's nothing we can do about it, when they can't find another physiological cause, you know, of course, what it is. And the only way to get better is to remove yourself from the awareness field of others by learning to be inaccessible, which is another topic for another tape. So manipulators work through getting you to desire them, feel you need them. You're smart, you're intelligent, you can figure it out, but someone makes you think you need them your banker, your lawyer, your accountant, your lover. People get into your life and they start performing simple tasks that you used to perform that you actually enjoyed and empowered you. And they act like you're doing, they're doing you a big favor. Gradually, they infiltrate your life and you become weaker. It's very important to do things for yourself. We derive a strength from it and an independence. Watch out for people who want to help you who want to come into your physical life. That's what I mean by help. Because again, if they can get physical proximity, it's easier to drain you. It's easiest to drain someone when you have physical proximity. Next is just an emotional connection, or if they can get you to fear them. If you fear your boss, if you fear the loss of the job, You've put someone in a position of control. With that control, they can drain your energy, lower your perceptual field, and take that energy into their own bodies. We see it, of course, you know, there's the older man, younger woman syndrome, where the older man was once a younger man with a younger woman, and he drains her energy as they live together and grow together. And he takes that energy into his own body. She never realizes it, of course. And he puts it into his life and into his career. He becomes successful. Then when her energy level is starting to lose it, she looks suddenly a lot older. The skin begins to fade, the hair, which means that her energy, life energy is low. He goes and finds himself another young woman to use as a power base. Women do the same thing with men, too, of course. But that particular manipulation we see more. through men. Men do that, of course, by 
causing women to think that they're weak and they can't be economically independent and so on, and that they need them. Women do the same thing, only they use sexual energy. We call it wrapping. I discussed it before, where you're projecting fields of sexual attention and getting someone to think that they're interested in you when you could care less. If you fall in love with someone who's just not your type of person, what do you think is taking place? The most dangerous of all manipulations is love, most frequently used. Someone will get you to love them or think that they love you. Human beings have this crazy need, and the need is not necessarily there. It's just part of a way of seeing that we grew up with, that people taught us, but that isn't necessarily intrinsic to our being, and it's a need to be loved. I don't really believe that we need to be loved. If no one ever loved you, you could have a perfectly happy life. I do think we have a need to love. And loving brings us into higher states of attention and makes us stronger. But we don't actually need to feel anybody's love to be happy. It isn't feeling someone's love that makes you happy. Someone can love you and you can be miserable if you're not in a good state of mind. But when we love, we are happy, we are strong and we take a step beyond the limited self, and we see the other. But love creates the greatest possibilities of manipulation. Love and ego. You see, a good manipulator can scan you psychically. They can look at you and feel your fears and feel your loves, and then they play those. They will then mold themselves into someone who appeals to you, and they will pretend not to be interested in the things you're not interested in. And they will pretend to be drawn to the things that you're drawn to. People have this ability, believe it. I mean, just consider yourself. How sensitive are you? Can't you look at another person and after talking with them for a few minutes or even just glancing across a room, get a pretty good idea if you wanted to about how to get into their life? Couldn't you over, go over there and talk to someone and flatter them? Get them to have lunch with you tomorrow? Gradually work their, work your way into their life and be a friend just by, you know, you could feel the weak spot. You know what they want to hear. And you know what they don't want to hear. Well, don't you think other people can do this to you? Maybe they have and they're already in your life. Now, you may say, well, gosh, do they really know consciously that they're draining my life force? Yep, they sure do. They know what they're doing. They're predators. We all have that side. You have that side. Don't pretend for a moment that you don't. The only difference is, as you evolve into higher levels of attention, you control that side. If you don't think you have that side, then you're a terrible manipulator. You're one of the worst. Because you're now manipulating not only others, but yourself into believing that you don't. Everybody has a light and dark side. Because we're all reflections of the universe, which contains all things. Begin by admitting that you have that sign. Naturally, of course, I'll come back to love in a moment, but naturally, of course, when you manipulate others, you create a line between yourself and them, which they can use to <laughs> draw energy from you. It's real funny. But once you create a line between yourself and someone else, you may create a line to manipulate someone. You play up to them. You want their energy. You want to be around them because they're powerful, they're successful. They can take that line, and when you're not aware of it, if they're manipulators also, they can take that very line that you've fastened on them and pull you in with it and drain you. That's why I advise people, don't manipulate, don't drain. There's enough energy in the universe for all of us. And you know, when you drain life force from others, it doesn't stay with you. It'll empower you temporarily. Or you can be like the husband with the young wife, or the wife with the strong husband who's draining him. And feed on people on a daily basis, and yeah, you'll have a little more energy every day. But, of course, from the advanced perceiver's point of view, you don't really want to drain energy from someone, because when you drain energy from someone, you also pick up their thoughts. And if you're interested in becoming really powerful, you can't have anybody else's thoughts inside you. 
because no matter what, they're not going to be enlightened thoughts. The people you're draining can't be that powerful. They can't have come into their own yet. Because if they have, they'd see what you were doing. You follow? So you're draining like a grade B life force, which most people are content with since they don't seek enlightenment and total power. But if you seek that, if you seek to go beyond this world, then draining won't do it for you, gang. Learning to meditate, focus, learning the occult and mystical arts, this will teach you how to create more than enough energy for yourself and even to give to some others who may need energy in their quest. But draining energy from others accomplishes nothing. Love is a manipulation. We're convinced that we need people to love us. We are lonely. You might be lonely. God loneliness opens you up to every kind of manipulation there is. You think that you need someone, uh, the Prince Charming, the Princess, the Wonderful Child, the Strong Lover, the Good Friend. Every one of these things opens you up to manipulation. You have to reach a point of certainty within yourself, which comes through introspection, that you don't need anyone. You can enjoy everyone and all things. Don't ever stop enjoying. But if you feel that you need something outside of yourself, then someone can come along and feel that need and play it and drain your life force. Everybody drains life force literally on the earth all the time. It's a continuous game that no one admits to. But if you're psychic, you can see it. And if you're very psychic, you can avoid it. The way you avoid manipulation is by doing everything you can for yourself that is possible. By, by setting up your life so that you don't depend on others. You can work with others, but you don't depend on them. There's no one in your life who you don't feel is replaceable. By never telling all your secrets to anyone, never opening up completely to anyone. If you need to open up completely to someone, open up to a tree, a squirrel, a frog, a, a celestial being, a magical enlightened being. Release yourself to God, to the sky, the earth, whatever but not to another human being who hasn't crossed over that border into the world of magic where they never seek to manipulate others for disadvantage. Never open up completely to anyone because, of course, they have a lower nature and, of course, they'll act on you. Learn the ways of inaccessibility. Don't let people know what you care about, what you think because they can weave their way into your thought patterns. It's good not to let people know where you live. You know, when you invite somebody over your house, you walk them around the house, you show them your bedroom, they fix that place in their mind and it's much easier for them to come back there psychically if they want to. That's like saying you're opening up your mind to them. But people will come back there because they'll feel your life energy there and they'll drain it. Surround yourself with good and happy things to restore yourself. Go to places of power. Practice the arts that increase your energy. Have lots of plants in the house that emanate a sympathetic vibration with a human form. A pet can be a real good friend if you need an emotional outlet. It's real fun to come home to your cat, dog, bird, and give them a nice hug and have them waiting for you. All they're interested in is the next can of cat food or dog food or bird seed. Or they just love you. And then sometimes you won't go open yourself to that human being who you didn't really want to open yourself, but you just felt this need. Of course, if you meditate, you'll feel light, ecstasy, energy. You'll see that you're the whole universe and you won't feel the need to look outside of yourself. Again, you can enjoy more than ever all things. But remember, as you're drained psychically, as you're manipulated, you won't even see life well. Life is beautiful wherever you go. But when people are acting on your perceptual field and draining your life energy, when you look at the world, it will appear gray to you. Uh, a day won't sparkle. The night won't shine. 
Nature won't seem as beautiful as it did when you were a child. A painting won't look as good as it used to. That's because your perceptual field is lower. Nature hasn't changed. The painting hasn't changed. Your perceptual field has dropped. You don't have as much energy. Things don't sparkle because your attention field is low, meaning that you need to do a systems analysis of your energy flow, which I'll talk about with you perhaps another time. You need to chart your energy patterns. So what should you do? Make a list. Make a list on one piece of paper of everyone in your life who you feel empowers you, and another list of everyone who drains you. Eliminate everyone in your life who drains you, and if you don't eliminate them completely from your life, eliminate a need or a fear or a love of those people because they're abusing you. Just feel indifferent. Draw your mind into places other than people. Don't dwell and think about people. Think about power places, think about art, read books. Don't focus so much on people. That's what they want. It's a good idea to keep track of who you think about and how much. Once a week, maybe on Sunday, sit down, keep a journal, and write down who you've thought about that week and how much. You can even do percentages. And if you keep a little journal, you'll begin to see after a while a correlation to how well you felt that week. Or you might just jot it down each day at the end of the day, because you'll forget. Then practice not thinking about people, and you'll notice if you think about fewer people, your attention field will be higher and brighter. You'll see a correlation to your success. You'll make more money, you'll get a better job, because your energy level is higher. When your energy level is low, you don't draw good things to you. But also, as your energy level increases, as you become more powerful, you become of more interest to manipulators. So as you become more powerful, as you follow the psychic study, inaccessibility becomes more and more of a factor. If you're poor, nobody wants to break into your house, no one wants to kidnap your daughter. When you're rich, they do. So naturally, with wealth and power comes a certain knowledge and responsibility. Don't be afraid of manipulators, but they're everywhere. They try and act on you and work on you. The most important thing that you need to do is first just to put this in your mind, to be conscious that this is all really taking the place, taking place on the earth 24 hours a day. And just begin to think about these things. Begin to look at people and ask them, how do I feel around this person? The only way you can tell is after you leave somebody. When you're with them physically, when you're around them, it's very hard to tell how they're actually affecting you. It's very difficult to know, because they can fool you, they can dazzle you, they can make you actually feel more energized for a little while. Then they can inject a lot of energy and make you feel sick and drop your attention field so that you didn't see what they were doing. It's a quick game. It's like the pretty coral that attracts the fish, fish goes to it, and then it stings the fish slowly injects a kind of a, a chemical into it that paralyzes the fish so it can't swim away and then gradually feeds on the fish. Someone attracts you to them, they dazzle you, then they weaken you and keep you around, make you need them, want them, love them, fear them. And then they gradually drain you, they, they inject doubts into you that you can't do it yourself, that you can't be happy, that you can't be mentally strong, clear and free. Nonsense. Anyone can develop a strong and powerful mind. Anyone can learn to be independent if you follow the ways of magic and mysticism. You can learn to be happy and free without depending upon anyone. But that's your battle. That's your struggle, is to gain your freedom from those around you who, through manipulation, domination, and control, seek to take your life force and energy. So be brave, be courageous, and you'll succeed. Keep meditating, and you'll succeed. Be fearless and you'll succeed. Don't lose hope and you'll succeed. And keep looking, keep watching. <laughs> They're everywhere. Good luck from Rama. <laughs>